before Polycarp was about to be martyred, he was asked by a Roman proconsul to reject Jesus, to which Polycarp declared, 86 years I have served him and he has done me no wrong. How could I blaspheme my king who saved me? The early persecution of Christians is an aspect that is ingrained in the New Testament and the writings of the early church fathers. It is an aspect which is still in effect in many countries where Christians are harassed and persecuted for their faith. Today, we'll take a linear look at this early persecution of Christianity, and specifically the first century AD. The foundation of Christianity is the death and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus is the pillar that all Christians follow in suit of. And in early Christianity, this even meant following him in death. For example, Jesus states in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 to 25, Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Although the book of Acts was written in the late first century, it still provides us with an early account of the apostles or early followers of Jesus and the spread of the gospel message throughout the Roman Empire from the 30s to early 60s AD. In Acts chapter 5, verse 40 to 42, the apostles get called in by the Jewish high priest and the elders of Israel. We read, And when they had called in the apostles, they had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As they left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. What's interesting about this passage is the honor or worthiness the apostles feel to suffer for the name of Christ. The same idea of suffering for the name of Christ is seen in Paul's letters written from around the late 40s to early 60s AD. For example, we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 11, For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be visible in our mortal flesh. Many groups at that time found the Christian religion to be revolting, and they persecuted the Christians for this reason. For example, Paul himself was one of the earliest persecutors of the church before he became Christian. Paul writes in Galatians chapter 1 verse 13, You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the church of God and was trying to destroy it. The book of Acts also records the account of Stephen, who was an early Christian convert to the church in around 34 to 36 AD. The Jewish Sanhedrin called him to trial for his teachings and his apparent blasphemy, which they thought he committed. After the trial, the Jews dragged him out to the city and had him stoned to death. This in turn caused somewhat of a chain reaction in Judea. We read in Acts chapter 8 verse 1 to 3, On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Now that we've covered much of the history recorded from the early 30s to late 50s AD, what were some early persecutions recorded after this time period? To start off, the Roman historian Tacitus wrote the Annals of the History of Rome in 109 AD. While he records the reign of Emperor Nero from 54 to 68 AD, Tacitus speaks of the great fires of Rome which wreak havoc on the city. At this time, many Roman citizens started to blame Nero for the fires, in which he repositioned the blame on the Christian people instead. Tacitus states, But all human efforts, all the lavish gifts of the emperor and the appropriation of the gods, did not banish the sinister belief that the conflagration was a result of an order. Consequently, to get rid of the report, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite tortures on a class hated for their abominations, called Christians by the populace. He continues and says, Accordingly, an arrest was first made of all who pleaded guilty. 
Then, upon their information, an immense multitude was convicted, not so much of the crime of firing the city, as of hatred against mankind. Mockery of every sort was added to their deaths. Covered with the skins of beasts, they were torn by dogs and perished, or were nailed to crosses, or were doomed to the flames and burnt, to serve as nightly illumination when daylight had expired. Emperor Nero's mass persecution of the church brought in a new outlook that the Roman people now had on the Christians. Nero's persecution was so severe that he has even made reference to in the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 18, we read, This calls for wisdom. Let anyone with understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number for a person. Its number is 666. Now, the number 666 is derived from the fact that when you put Caesar Nero in Hebrew, you get the numerical figure of 666 based on the alphabet numerology. This shows the impact Nero had on the Christian people. This great persecution of Christians by Nero is also when it is traditionally thought that Peter and Paul were killed. For example, Tertullian the Church Father writes in the Scorpius that, At Rome, Nero was the first who stained with blood the rising faith. Then is Peter girt by another when he is made fast to the cross. Then does Paul obtain a birth suited to a Roman citizenship, when in Rome he springs to life again ennobled by martyrdom. The Revelation is dated by scholars to have been written around the mid to late 90s AD. In it, we have many references to Christian persecutions which the church has faced. For example, Revelation chapter 6 verse 9 states, When he broke the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slaughtered for the word of God and for the testimony they had given. In almost every single piece of the New Testament writings, we see a profound theme of persecution and martyrdom. It is an interesting attribute of Christianity, and oddly enough, the idea of persecution and martyrdom actually brought many Romans to faith in Christ instead of deterring them from becoming Christian. As 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 16 states, Yet if any of you suffers as a Christian, do not consider it a disgrace, but glorify God because you bear this name. Thank you for watching, and God bless.